Circus makes its move and we are heading to Suzuka for the Japanese Grand Prix. But before we get there, let's have a look at some of the news that's broken out over the course of the weekend so far. Now, teams are starting to put some pressure on the FIA over Red Bull's engines. Now, the reason that it started to put some pressure onto Red Bull because of these engines is specifically because of what happened not last season, but the season before. Now, the season before last, Noah James and Mason Woods took part in a breaking an entry into the Ford T factory in which they stole engine data plans and they obviously gave them back over to Red Bull. But of course, Red Bull is still saying that they never actually knew anything about these specific engine data plans that they were given. Now, why teams are starting to put pressure onto the FIA over Red Bull's engines is because teams have not yet had confirmation that the engine data that Noah and Mason stole was seized. Now, what teams are starting to try and comply with here is have Red Bull secretly used any of the data that was given to them from Mason Wood at the time and has that been implemented into the current cars? At the start of last season, Red Bull were very much struggling with their car. One of the big things that they were struggling with was straight line speed. But then they introduced an upgrade and the Red Bull power unit became competitive again and Red Bull are fighting at the front as we see it now. But is that down to the legitimacy of their engine or is it because of plans that they stole? Crucially last season as well, the Ford car was not exactly the best car overall. But what it did have was one of the strongest power units on the grid. So teams started to get suspicious that Ford's great power unit seems to have helped with Red Bull getting a stronger power unit themselves. Now, obviously, the first man to speak about this on the Red Bull camp of things is Dr. Helmut Marko. And as you can see from the text scrolling below, he has shut down these rumours as complete and utter. You can see what he said. Now, this is going to get rather interesting if teams are going to start to pressurise this or whether they're going to go ahead and form a, lo a logical protest, which is probably where this will go down. But this is going to get very tricky as we head later on into this season. Taking a look at the race moves then as we head into the Japanese Grand Prix, it was Red Bull that were ended up fastest in practice. Daniel Ricciardo was the fastest man in FP2 and FP3, while Sam was quicker than his teammates in FP1. But it is looking like a Red Bull showdown heading into this weekend. But of course, we know that there are teams very much in the mix, such as Ferrari and also McLaren, that may be just slightly turning down all of their power modes and saving it to when it counts. Now, the final bit of the news we have heading into this weekend, a little bit of good news and some bad news for Renault. Starting off with the bad news, Tom is currently very lost at the moment on where he's losing all of his performance time, especially in the first sector. Tom is currently stating that he believes he's losing currently seven tenths of a second per lap in sector one alone. Now what it looks like to be is something to do with setup, as Tom is able to slightly get closer, if not match the, his opponents in sector two, and he is then much quicker than everybody else in the third sector. I think it's quite clear that Tom needs to go into the data and find out a little bit more. Now looking at the good news for Renault, and finally they have got their much needed ERS upgrade that they've been waiting for for quite some time. The key downfall of Renault's championship challenge last season, not only was their cars around them being much faster, but the Renault ERS power terrain was very, very poor. Now, whenever Renault were getting into a position where they needed to deploy their battery, they only had it good enough for around about two laps before it dropped to below 10%. And then they had such difficulties charging the ERS, it was becoming a nightmare to the point where they practically were running the race without it. Finally, though, they have managed to get their ERS upgrades forwarded here to the Japanese Grand Prix. And so far, things look promising. So wherever they'll be able to use it is going to really help them out heading into this weekend. So let's see if it makes a difference. Let's get straight into the Japanese Grand Prix. Hey, how's it going, guys? It is Fox19 here. Welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of the F4 journey for you guys today here on the channel. Today, we have for round number two of season number nine. This is the Japanese Grand Prix. So hopefully you guys end up enjoying the video. If you do end up enjoying the video, feel free to drop it a like to showcase your support for enjoying the video. And if you're somebody that is new around here and you're enjoying the content that you do see here on the channel, feel free to subscribe as well, because that also really does help out. So let's get straight into things then, and let's get into qualifying. And as you can see, we're on our first flying lap here, and we go a little bit wide here on the exit of Spoon, and that nearly uh, went uh, sideways there. Well, the car did go sideways, actually, but luckily we were able to control it there. So we're going to carry on 
with the end of this lap here as Sergio Perez goes fastest in the Mercedes on a 120.5. Unfortunately, this lap is not going to be anywhere near there. This is actually one of my weakest circuits as we knock over those bollards there on the calendar. Um, and that's specifically because the AIs are just so much faster uh, around here. So unfortunately, uh, it's going to be a damage limitation weekend. And you can see that we ended up going one and a half seconds slower there. As we now go through onto our final flying lap here, here we go back through this uh, exact same corner as last time, but this time around, uh, we actually went a little bit wide there, um, but crucially, we did not actually uh, lose the rear end of the car, so we're all right on that front here, but we're currently on the back of the grid. We're currently last, actually, B20, so we need this lap to pretty much bolster us up the order, so let's see how far up the order we can get here, or are we going to be slumped at the back of the field here as we go now round the final corner here to the start-finish line, that lap was only P17. It's race day here for round number two of the F1 journey. This is season number nine. It is the F1 journey Honda Japanese Grand Prix. And here we are getting ready to get this season back underway here at the Suzuka International Circuit. As you can see, it is cloudy, but it is also dry. But let's go have a look at the Suzuka International Circuit's layout. It's the only figure of eight circuit on the F1 calendar. The 3.608 mile circuit has become an iconic circuit within the Formula One calendar with 18 turns plenty of high-speed corners and many iconic ones too. Just the one DRS zone as well down the pitch straights overtaking is going to be slightly more difficult. It's the C3, C2 and the C1 tyres. It's the hardest in the Pirelli tyre compound range, but hopefully they should be able to get the drivers comfortably to the end of the Grand Prix. And as you can see, we've got an air temperature of just 14 degrees. It's a very cool day here in Japan, but that is not going to stop the drivers from heating up the circuit. Let's look at the starting grid then. It's a front row Lockout for Red Bull. It is Ricardo though on pole position with Sam, his teammate, alongside. Mick Schumacher qualifies in third with Reese in the McLaren starting in P4. Next up is Pato Awards in P5 with the leading Audi driver of Charles Leclerc starting the race from sixth position. Next is the two Mercedes Benz cars with Nick DeVries out qualifying Sergio Perez by two one thousandths of a second. Lando Norris starts the race in P9. Gasly starts from P10, just a thousand separated them two. Verstappen starts 11th. A disappointing qualifying for Lewis Hamilton. He's only in P12 with George Russell lining up 13th. Oscar Piastri is 14th on the grid. Stoffer Van Dorn and Callum Eilat make it an all forward row with them 15th and 16th. Tom starts in P17 with Valtteri Bottas lining up 18th on the grid. And then the bottom row of the grid is Theo Porcher 19th and Sainz last. Alright, so as you can see, we're on the grid here for the start of the Japanese Grand Prix. We're going to be doing a two, uh, not two stop race, a one stop race, crucially. Uh, and as you can see, it is going to be a set of softs to the set of hards. And we're just having a look there at the tyre pressures and stuff. But enough has been done. Let's get this race underway. Five red lights and the lights are out and away we go then for the start of the Japanese Grand Prix a decent getaway from us now activating the ERS here as we make our way down towards the first corner here not making any overtakes but crucially being very cautious and going for the outside line here around the first corner now trying to back pull away with Stoffer Van Dorn in the border we're going to accelerate now through towards the S sections here and just close the door there on Stoffer Van Dorn very tactically uh, through there just trying to make sure that we got through in one piece here as we're now trying to look at the back of Russell and also Piastri there is just directly in front now as you go through towards the exit uh, of all of the S's and then through the Dunlop Kirby. We're actually losing some time now to the cars in front here as we make our way through towards the Degners and that was very heavily on the attack there from ourselves but nearly going into the back of Russell through the exit of Degner 1. But now as we go towards the hairpin, this is as you can see where you can make up a bunch of places that's what we'll do. We're going to go down the inside of a couple here. Yellow flag in towards the hairpin. That's just because all the airs are just uh, literally uh, bunched up behind each other. But we're now into 12th place here. So five places off the start. It's a very good run here. Lewis Hamilton is next up the road here. So I, I believe Hamilton are quite difficult qualifying actually. That's put him way out of position in this Grand Prix. We now go on to the back straight here. This is when we can deploy our battery. And crucially now, we can deploy our battery a lot more because finally our ERS upgrade has arrived for this race. So we can now really start to pressurize the cars in front. And we're going to do that here with Hamilton. And we're going to go and fake to the outside line. Then dive it down the inside into the final chicane here and get past Lewis Hamilton. Crucial move that one. Knocking over those bollards because they're just in the way. As uh, we can see, Ricardo sets the fastest lap. We're now into 11th place. 
one place position shy of the points as we make our way down towards someone one here. Gasly is now uh, in P9, our teammate there. Norris is directly in front of us, going a little bit wide there uh, through the exit of the first corner. So let's go and have a look at the race start then, see how things went on for the drivers in front and behind here. Five red lights go off and they are out and Ricardo gets away nicely. It's actually Sam there that looked to have a little bit of a disappointing start. For us, mind, at the back here, we got an okay-ish start. The secondary phase of the start wasn't that good, but we were able to just swoop around the outside here, getting past both of the Ford cars, crucially, uh, and then we are able to squeeze out Van Thorne. And this is on board too with Mick Schumacher and his start was extremely good here. He actually gets a much better start than what Sam did off the line there. Sam is actually alongside still heading in towards the first corner. So Mick can't claim the track position. And this is on board with Sam now. So we're going to flip between the two here. Mick now going towards the inside of the S's. So Sam is trying to hold it uh, versus Schumacher. But Schumacher is keeping his nose in there constantly. This is allowing Daniel Ricciardo to pull away. But Sam outbreaks Schumacher. Uh, and he's able to just breeze off into the distance. This is on board with Reese now here off the line. And as you can see, again, he doesn't quite get the greatest of starts. He's going to have to instantly cover off the inside line, but eventually that secondary phase of the start, which I said worked for some drivers behind, definitely worked out for Reese here. And uh, as you can see, as he flings his way through towards the S section, this is what it looked like on board from his section here. So he's actually also trying to have a look at Mick Schumacher here, but Sam just eventually really gets his elbows out and gets the position done, and that is his for the taking. Lap two of the Grand Prix for us though, we're now going through Spoon Corner, getting a lot of understeer in the car. I was noticing that a lot, especially through that corner. But now onto the back straight here, we can just absolutely rinse this battery dry and get ourselves right onto the back of Lando Norris. And we're gonna do that now with the exit of 130R. We get a great run through there. Now to the outside line here of the, um, I can't remember the, the final chicane's name. It's got a thing, I think it's the Casio Triangle, but I won't say it anymore because I don't know if I've made that wrong or not. But we get past Lando Norris, up into the points now here in this race. And uh, next up is our teammate Pierre Gasly. So we'll try and get onto the back of him. He is onto the back of Nick DeVries, who's also on the back of Sergio Perez, who's on the back of Leclerc, who's on the back of O'Ward, who's on the back of Vries, who's on the back of Schumacher, who's on the back of Ricardo, who's on the back of Sam. I got that all right until the final Red Bulls at the front. But it's towards lap four of the Grand Prix now. We attack Degna one quite heavily there. Attacking Degna two then got us offline a little bit there. Now towards the hairpin here. In towards the, uh, in towards the hairpin. We've made contact there with Norris. Norris making contact there with our left rear tire. We're now scrambling for positions here as Hamilton tried to sneak it up the inside there. Norris goes way down the order after that. Verstappen now moves up into 11th place there. But that's a little bit of a horror show there from ourselves as Lando took advantage because I couldn't get the Degners correct uh, through that section of the of the track. But then eventually it's the, it's the um, track just sort of kicked right in towards the hairpin there. Norris and, uh, made connection with our right rear tire there and that caused us to swerve into his path there forcing Norris onto the gravel. Hamilton, luckily, uh, did not get past us, but onto lap five here, once again through the exit. The deck is a little bit wide there. Hamilton senses an opportunity here as we're a little bit flustered now as they get, try and get a position here, but he doesn't quite do it, but we do defend the inside line. But Hamilton beautifully switched back his Ferrari towards the inside line now as we make our way down towards Spoon Corner now. This is where we just force Hamilton as wide as possible, allowing us to get as much speed through there and deploy the battery, and we are safe. But unfortunately, what we are not safe from uh, is uh, the DRS from Pierre Gasly. I've lost that now, and that was what was going to hopefully keep me going in this Grand Prix. So that contact with Gasly really has backfired. On lap 9 of the Grand Prix, you can see that it has backfired because the gap's now gone up to 3.1 seconds. Yes, the gap's only gone up by 1.1 seconds, but crucially, the gap's gone up now because I've lost DRS here. Now I'm faster than the AIs in Sector 3. Um, I'm also a little bit, uh, probably even to them on sector two, but I'm definitely quicker than them in the third sector because it's just a straight line, really. The problem I've got is that the AIs are so much faster than me in sector one. They'll be faster than anybody in sector one. It's Mick Schumacher there, crosses the line with the fastest lap of the race. He actually carries on there, and he's gone onto a set of the soft tires, so he's going a different way with strategy then, so that's interesting. But as I was going back to with the pace deficit, it's crucial that I use the DRS to keep me in range, but unfortunately, I don't have that now. So I'm going to have to try and find some superhuman pace. Otherwise, we could be in for a very lonely Grand Prix. Hopefully, that's not the case. But let's try and press onwards now in this race here. Lap 10 of the Grand Prix, we're now switching to lap 11. Norris pits now. We've got a yellow flag up ahead, though. Someone's had a problem. We're going to have to find out who that is there. That is a uh, orange drop there. That's a McLaren. That's a Ward. And that's just going wide as well. But that's a Ward there that's had a problem then. In towards the first corner. And here it is now. As he comes out of the pits, he's made contact with his own teammate there. Recent awards have come to blows very early on in this Grand Prix as he was coming out of the pits there. Let's have a look here. So Reese now gets in towards turn one. And a Ward there down the inside. 
it's quite hard to put the blame there on anybody else. You probably have to put it on, oh, that was so close for Sam there uh, towards the back of her ward. But Reese there made an overtake crucially on Sam there. And uh, as we're on board now with Ricardo here, he's got Mick Schumacher behind him. Mick Schumacher, of course, is going a different way with strategy here. He's onto a two-stop in this race. Uh, Ricardo is on a one-stopper here, but crucially, Daniel Ricardo is passed by Mick Schumacher. Mick now leads the Japanese Grand Prix, but he's got to stop again in this race. So hopefully, Schumacher has got the pace in that Ferrari to pull away on the soft compound tyres. Otherwise, that two-stop strategy is going to go completely wrong here, as unfortunately, Landon Norris is out of the Grand Prix. Unfortunately, whenever it says uh, if a driver retires from a race, it never shows there the name that I've modded it to. Everything else is all correct, but it only shows that. So I'll make sure to correct you guys on that. That was Landon Norris then that you saw pulling over to the side of the circuit. His race is over, but onto the 17th lap here of the Grand Prix now. Verstappen is very much close to us. Max Verstappen's got a different way here. He's going to go try down the inside into Tech the one. That would have been a very brave overtake if we went for that one there. But on the exit now, in towards the hairpin, this is a chance for Verstappen, but he's not quite close enough to go for it. But Crucially now, Verstappen's going to be putting me under a lot of pressure here because Max went a little bit longer as he's down the inside into the hairpin there. But Verstappen is unable to make that one count. Crucially though, he's in front of Lewis Hamilton now, but he is on a set of medium compound tyres. So he's going to be a lot faster in this Grand Prix. So we need to make sure that we can keep him back because I can let him through and try and DRS him to, keep us, uh, to get us to the back of Nick DeVries and Gasly. But crucially, because he is on those medium tyres, I just don't know whether it's better to just let him through because I could easily lose DRS from Verstappen. So I've decided to just stick to my own race and just stick to just pressing on with the Grand Prix. You see the front tyres there getting very worn now in this Grand Prix. That was something that I was noticing, especially on my soft tyres as well. I'm suffering a lot. That's a back end. That's a little bit of oversteer there on the exit there. I'm suffering a lot uh, with um, the uh, front tyre graining. It's costing me a lot here. Verstappen gets a lovely run through the inside here on the hairpin. So much more grip and confidence in the Jaguar. And it's a drag race now down towards Spoon, just like we did with Lewis Hamilton earlier in the Grand Prix. Verstappen now, would he go for it? Down the inside into Spoon. We'll have to hold it around the outside. It's close to contact there. There might have actually been a tiny little touch there with Gerard Sales and Verstappen. We hold the position. Now Verstappen's got to defend from Hamilton behind. He is now using, as you can see there, overtake is enabled for Lewis Hamilton. He tried to go to the inside, but then it didn't work for him. Oh, sorry, he go to the outside. Didn't work for him. Now to the inside, into 130R. Holds it in there, down towards the final chicane. Now, this is crucial for Lewis Hamilton to see if he can get back past Verstappen, who, of course, overcut him in this Grand Prix but Verstappen look at the exit he got on those medium compound tyres that is an insane grip there from the Red Bull lap 25 now skipping a lot further into this Grand Prix now we're on board with Mick Schumacher here unfortunately his race has gone absolute to pot here um, that's not even a sentence but I've just made it one because Schumacher, on a two-stopper here, is battling the Porsche car here, Valtteri Bottas. And he's literally, as you can see there, thanks for that, he's on his dash there. P15, and he's got two laps to go. So, for him, that's really not gone to plan there. Bottas now with some DRS. It's Mick Schumacher, though, that's got DRS here. But Mick, on the medium compound tyres, is going to swoop around the outside. He's going to have to fight for it, though. Bottas will give it everything he's got. But Schumacher gets in front now in this Grand Prix here. So, as you can see now, lap 26 to start lap 27. This is the battle for the lead of the Grand Prix. Reese has been following the back of Daniel Ricciardo all race long, but Reese now with a DRS here is going to go for it in towards the first corner. Ricciardo's got nothing to answer for. Reese now, who's been following Daniel Ricciardo ever since the pit stops when they were on lap 11. Reese has made his move and he takes the lead of the Japanese Grand Prix. Further back, we've got Oscar Piastri and also uh, George Russell going for a little bit of a scrap here into the first corner. It's a very easy move there for uh, George Russell. Everybody going for their battles right at the end of the Grand Prix. No one wants him to do it in the mid-stage of the race. And for me, on to lap 27 of the Grand Prix, unfortunately, it turned into the race that I didn't want it to turn into. Uh, it turned into me very much uh, losing track with the rest of the field. And as you can see there, Reese crosses the line to win the Grand Prix. He also actually takes a faster lap as well in the process, just to rub it in there. But yes, as we now go through in towards the final two quarters here, it's been a very difficult drive, but at the end of the day, we started in P17 here today. We're going to cross the line to finish in P8. It's not a great result. It's not the result that we really want to be having uh, with the car that we've got. But the, unfortunately, the track uh, is very much not suited to me. It's suited to the AIs. And crucially, despite starting in P17, at least we got ourselves some points. And as you can see then, here is the full race results. And uh, as you can see, some brand new graphics that we now have uh, created 
uh, while Sam actually found the graphics, uh, but I went ahead and edited all of it. So, here's what it looks like. So, Reese wins the Grand Prix uh, for McLaren, with Daniel Ricciardo finishing in second place. He was actually on the medium compound tyres, which may just be why Reese was able to get so far clear uh, on the final lap there. Um, of course, Ricciardo on those mediums, and presuming they dropped off the cliff. Sam finishes in third for the second Red Bull car. The top three just separated by just under four seconds. There's a big gap then to Charles Leclerc, uh, who finishes in fourth. Sergio Perez finishes in fifth for Mercedes with Pierre Gasly rounding off uh, in P6 for Renault. So uh, fair play to Gasly. He was better than me this weekend and he takes that position. Nick DeVries finishes in seventh uh, for the second Mercedes driver with ourselves finishing in eighth place. Verstappen finishes in P9, holding off Lewis Hamilton for P10. But as I was saying, we definitely uh, lost out because of not having the DRS um, and that all curtailed from the contact uh, from lap four. But crucially, that contact was made because of course I uh, lost the rear end uh, through the first Degna, got me out of shape for the second Degna, and then I lost it from there. So it's really annoying, uh, it's my fault. Uh, and I think if I had DRS, I would have been able to have stuck to all of those cars and the potential for a P4 could well have been on. I think I would have had the pace to pass De Vries, Gasly, Perez and Leclerc, especially into the uh, one, into the exit of 130R. That's when my car was at its fastest. But unfortunately, we made a mistake. We didn't have the pace anyway and we also had a lot of front tire grading. So, you know, it works. It swings both ways. Looking at the second half of the table now, George Russell finishes in 11th place for Audi. Oscar Piastri is 12th for Aston Martin. P Pato Award finishes in 13th place. That's disappointing for Award, but of course he did make contact with his teammate who uh, was uh, carrying a lot of overspeed through there because he was actually overtaking Sam in the process. Callum Eilat is 14th for four with Mick Schumacher in 15th for the second Ferrari. His two-stop strategy didn't work uh, and that really has so shot him in the foot. Valtteri Bottas is 16th ahead of his teammate Sainz in 17th place. Theo Porcher is uh, 18th for Aston Martin. And then it is Landon Norris and Stoffel Van Dorn, who are the two drivers that did not end up finishing today's race. The fastest lap went to Reese in the McLaren with a 1 minute 21.388. And he set that on the last lap of the race, which was, uh, yeah, another reason why he was really taking the mick there. Um, as we now have a look at the Drivers' Championship to see how that now has shaped things up after two rounds, it is Sam that is living in dreamland at the moment. He is on 41 points uh, for Red Bull with Daniel Ricciardo, his teammate, second in the championship with 28 points. Reese moves up to third in the championship. Reese DNF'd from the first race of the season, if you remember, um, but he's hit back hard with a win and a fastest lap to go third in the championship. We are down to fourth in the championship uh, now on 22 points with Sergio Perez fifth also on 22 points right behind us. Lewis Hamilton is sixth in the championship with 16 points to his name. It has been a good first race for Hamilton but a bad second race. Nick De Vries is seventh in the championship on 14 points. Then we've got Charles Leclerc in eighth for Audi with 12 points. Yeah, Gasly stays ninth in the championship. He's also got 12 points though to his name. And then Pato Award stays in 10th in the championship. He's only got six points to his name, of course. That uh, uh, non-point scoring finish today really has cost him. Looking at the Constructors' Championship now, and as you can see, um, a lot of teams moved up and down. Um, for this season, um, I actually went ahead and edited the Constructors' Championship graphic for you guys, so you can see the movement of the Constructors. Um, so, Red Bull lead the championship with a cheeky 69 points to their name. Mercedes-Benz have got 36 points. They move in front of us now uh, with uh, 34 points to our name. McLaren move in front of Ferrari. They've got 32 points. Ferrari are on 31 points. Audi with their a uh, good point score and finish today with Charles Leclerc finishing in fourth. Jump in front of Aston Martin, who are on two points. Jaguar pick up their first points of the season, so they move in front of Ford. Uh, and Vodafone Porsche uh, stay exactly where they are. It's only Red Bull and Porsche that stayed where they were. Um, so, yeah, that is everything for the Japanese Grand Prix. Let's get straight into the post-race notebook. See what the teams and drivers had to say after the Japanese Grand Prix. Taking a look at the post-race notebook after today's Japanese Grand Prix, defending champion Reese snatches a late win against Daniel Ricciardo in the Red Bull. Daniel Ricciardo went a different way with strategy compared to most of the top 10. Only Verstappen in the top 10 went the same way as what Ricciardo did. 
he went from the soft tyres to the medium compound tyres, trying to go to the end of the race on a one stopper, but doing it on the two softest tyres. Meanwhile, the rest of the grid pretty much went the opposite way and started on the softs, but finished on the hard tyres. And it was quite clear that that strategy payoff from Ricardo didn't quite work. And unfortunately, he has to settle for P2, just missing out on his first win for Red Bull on the final lap, with his teammate Sam finishing in P3. Daniel Ricciardo admitted that his tyres were gone at the end of the race. Of course, like we just said a second ago, Daniel Ricciardo was on the medium compound tyres, whereas Reese was on the hard tyres. Reese eventually managed to pass Ricciardo on the final lap of the Grand Prix, but of course, Reese was able to follow Ricciardo throughout the entirety of the second stint, meaning that when it came to crunch time, he was able to get the job done. Sam admits that he was beaten fair and square this weekend and admits he also needs to get on top of his car a little bit better and hopefully he can have a stronger weekend in the next few races to come. Of course, Ricardo in his second race back at Red Bull was able to comfortably uh, be in front of Sam throughout the course of the weekend. And then finally, of course, we move over to Tom, who, of course, uh, managed to take home a P8 finish. He was there frustrated, though, after the Grand Prix, especially due to the lack of DRS that he was able to get, because, of course, he made contact with Lando Norris uh, at the start of the race, which dropped him out of DRS range. He was able to get that back, and also he suffered from way too much front tyre graining than his uh, team had anticipated. Something they need to look at heading into the next race, which is the Singapore Grand Prix. So we will catch you guys next time for that race. And until then, we are out of here. Take care all.